Hey everybody, Jazzy here. Today, it is my goal to present to you a comprehensive guide on growing nettles in Don't Starve Hamlet. This information is as of the Apocalypse update and subject to change in the full release. Matter of fact, the reason I've waited so long to create a guide on what many consider to be one of the most important survival items in the DLC is because their growth mechanics have gone through some extensive revisions since the beta. That said, I do get the sense that at this point, most of the kinks have been worked out and they are now functioning close, if not exactly, to how the developers intended. So what are nettles? Nettles are a food item, restoring 10 hunger and 10 health. More importantly, they do not spoil, meaning you can harvest and stockpile large amounts of nettles as a reliable and 100% renewable source of hunger and health restoration with an infinite shelf life. However, the big use for nettles is as a temporary cure for hay fever in lush season. According to the wiki, eating one nettle will prevent hay fever for 200 seconds, but a nettle roll made in a crock pot with three nettles will prevent hay fever for 720 seconds. That's 12 minutes or one and a half in-game days. Lush season only lasts 11 days and hay fever doesn't typically hit until the second day. This means that a mere 21 nettles cooked into seven nettle rolls can keep your player hay fever free throughout the entirety of the season. Once you hack through those brambles, lush season can feel almost peaceful when you're not sneezing your face off every 10 seconds. Well, almost. Now, because it is such a valuable commodity, I believe that Clay correctly implemented this item as a royal pain in the ass to acquire. Nettles grow from nettle vines which are found in deep forest biomes and dug up with a shovel. They can be replanted in any biome but will only grow in deep forest. There's another caveat, nettles will only grow when their vine is in a wet state. As long as they remain wet they will continue to grow, blooming nettles in about 23.5 in-game segments, which is almost exactly 1.5 in-game days or 12 real-time minutes. Ironically, almost exactly the amount of time a single nettle roll keeps away the hay fever. This means that, if left alone, nettle plants will never bloom naturally, even in humid season, because deep fog and rain will never last long enough to keep the vine wet for that long, and the moment they dry up their growth cycle resets until the next time they are hydrated. So, how exactly do these plants manage to pollinate if they never bloom naturally? Never mind, it's a video game, doesn't need to make botanical sense. Anyways, the only way to keep these vines wet long enough to bloom is with a sprinkler. Sprinklers must be placed within five tiles of a pond, horizontally or diagonally, in order to draw water. This means the only place you can feasibly plant nettles is in an area of deep forest that's close to a pond. This does severely limit your options when growing, but the good news is I have yet to see a world generated without prospective nettle farmland on at least two islands. If you're lucky, you might even get it on three. I typically get one on the fifth island with the Apocalypse calendar and one or two spots on my spawn island. Now, when selecting an area to stick your sprinkler, bear in mind that there are two entities that exist in deep jungle that can possibly inhibit your ability to place nettle vines. The first is jungle ferns, those little green banes of my existence that do absolutely nothing except give a purely aesthetic feel of overgrowth and make you pull your hair out while trying to find open space in which to place structures. Fortunately, there is an option in the world generation settings to adjust the amount of jungle ferns that generate. I'd suggest setting this to none. The other potential hindrance is hanging vine spawners. These are not visible, though if you wait around long enough you will see vines spawn around it. You can detect them by using the geometric placement mod. They will be indicated by red spots in the grid where no other item or entity can be seen. As far as I know, there is no way to destroy these. You can adjust them in world gen settings or just try to avoid them and save yourself the hassle of constantly having to shear and smack hanging vines just to pick your nettles in peace. Once you've found a suitable location, place your sprinkler and plant the nettle vines around it as closely as possible. Although the sprinkler will advertise a watering radius of three tiles, its actual range is about one and a half tiles. Hopefully this gets fixed in the full release because it is not a lot of coverage. Also, learn from my perpetual mistakes and please, please throw down a lightning rod in range of the vines. Once your vines are planted, turn your sprinkler on and run out of range before you get soaked. You will see the vines turn from a dry to wet state which will indicate that they are now growing. So now you just come back in one and a half days and collect your nettles, right? Unfortunately, no, you will need to check back sooner, and the reason is because sprinklers can only hold enough fuel to stay powered for 15 game segments, or about seven and a half minutes. Which means that you are gonna have to come back and top it off with a couple of logs before it shuts off and the nettles dry up, resetting their growth cycle. 
Take my advice. Find something to do in the area. Chop trees, kill spider monkeys, harass a hippopotamus, whatever, you get the idea. Just set a timer for five minutes when you turn the sprinkler on. That will give you roughly two minutes to run back and fuel her up when the timer goes off. Once you top off your sprinkler, just come back in five more minutes and your nettles should be close to ready, if not already bloomed. Congratulations! Your nettle babies have found you deserving of their love. Be sure to wear rain protection while harvesting or you will quickly become drenched. And don't turn off the sprinkler while harvesting or some of the nettles might dry up before you get a chance to pick them. Rinse and repeat, literally. And you can have an entire lush season's supply of antihistamines in a few days. Now let's talk about the sprinkler. Because crafting one is a considerable chore in and of itself. Its recipe calls for two alloy, six ice, and a blue gem. The ice is easily and cheaply acquired at the grocer in the hamlet near your spawn. Look for the carrot sign. The blue gem can be found in the ancient pig ruins, either by hammering pots or looting secret rooms. In my experience, the secret rooms are the better bet, and I will provide a link to my guide on how to blow through suspicious cracks without using gunpowder. Making alloy will require access to a smelter, which has a rather expensive crafting recipe itself. Six cut stone, four boards, and one red gem, which can be acquired the same way as a blue gem. Once you craft a smelter at an alchemy engine, you can smelt alloy from iron ore, which is renewable through the iron hulks. You can also acquire alloy by using the executive hammer to destroy lampposts. You'll need to smash two of those in order to get enough alloy for a sprinkler. So this whole process leaves the big question of early game workflow. What do you prioritize in the early days if you want to have nettles by the first lush season? To me, the big obstacle becomes acquiring both a red and a blue gem in order to craft the smelter and sprinkler required to grow nettles. Because of this, I would recommend delving into the ruins as soon as possible and looting those hidden rooms. I typically head straight for the second hamlet, looting the ruins as I go. There are several items in those stores that make early game a whole lot easier. Also, I definitely get picked up by the BFB when she comes around because the weathered eggs in her nest have a decent chance to drop gems when mined. So to recap the workflow, it goes a little like this. Find a red gem, build a smelter to smelt iron ore. Find a blue gem, build a sprinkler. Plant your sprinkler and nettles, harvest your nettles. It's an extensive and cumbersome process, and it doesn't help that you only get about 23 days before your character starts sneezing uncontrollably and your sanity goes out the window. But in my opinion, the reward for all of this work is exquisitely implemented and well-deserved. Once you actually get this farm up and running, those nettles will reward you continually and renewably with hunger and health, restoration that you can save up forever. And they will make one of the most potentially hazardous seasons feel like a stroll through the hand. Hamlet. Thanks for watching this guide. I hope it has been comprehensive but also comprehensible. If not, please post in the comments what else you have learned about growing nettles, or if any part of this makes less sense than it should. And if you found this guide useful, know that by hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel, you greatly increase your odds of seeing similar guides from me in the future. Godspeed on growing these little dudes, and see you next time.